All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Well-Centered Woman podcast. I am absolutely delighted to have Coach Rhonda Barnes. She teaches leaders and believers, emerging leaders and believers on how to go from milk to meat as they operate in their identity and move in their spheres of influence, doing all that they need to do for the kingdom of God. So I'm delighted to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Mm-hmm. So, you know that phrase, milk to me. Talk about mm-hmm. it. Tell me about that process. Yes, ma'am. So, milk to meat is about transitioning leaders, emerging leaders, and believers um, into maturity, both spiritually and naturally. A lot of times as we're transitioning, whether you're just coming into the kingdom or whether you're a leader, a seasoned leader, or an emerging leader, there are pockets of capacity that need to be built. And oftentimes these pockets of capacity can be difficult. They can be hard. And um, I can just remember being younger, watching some leaders that were so anointed, they were graced. There was so much in them, but some of them never made it to that fullness, that place of the fullness of God operating in the fullness of who he called them to be. And what I've seen is if we don't master those pockets of capacity where the Lord is stretching us effectively, we'll see ourselves going around the same mountain over and over again. And so my job as a coach, as a pastor, as a leader is to help people, believers, emergent leaders, and those that are called to navigate and reign and have dominion in specific spheres of influence, I'm helping them to break through that capacity phase and giving them tips and tools and even um, just insight and wisdom and how to navigate those places in a way that honors God and helps them to uh, shift to the next season with all the jewels that they're supposed to have for the next place that God is calling them to. So good. Now I love you. You're throwing out lingo and you're saying stuff already. (laughs) Pockets of capacity. Now you got pockets of capacity. Mm -hmm. Can you break this down a little bit more? Absolutely. So when I talk about pockets of capacity. These are the places where the Lord begins to deal with your character. Mm -hmm. Um, And so sometimes it's ways of thinking or even ways that we've done things in a previous season that cannot go with us into the new season. And so what most, well, not, I won't say most, but what a lot of people Um, that's where they get stuck. That's where you see people saying, hey, you know, I feel like I I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel like I'm lost. I need some assistance. But it's because there are almost, it feels like walls. And to a certain extent, it is a wall that must be broken down in order for you to get through into this wide open space for you to be able to build. Um, But if we don't break through that area, and so that pocket of capacity is when we feel the pressure and the weight of that space. So whether it's the weight of our attitudes, not wanting to shift, a lot of times the Lord will have us um, repent or forgive, or these are the times where you have to serve people where you don't want to serve. These are the places where you um, want to, where the Lord will call you to give when you don't want to give, or he may call you to just sacrifice certain areas in your life or certain things that you're used to having. Um, so that he can stretch you. And it's all a part of him shaping our heart or prepping our heart for the next season or for the next stage. And so if we don't master those pockets and those pockets are difficult, sometimes those pockets will challenge you, right? That's where people experience the shame and the guilt and the frustrations, because this is where the Lord begins to let you see the areas that need to be changed. Oh my God, you dropping the mic already going. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rolled over there to the front door. <laughs> so, You're so funny. Listen, yeah. So what I'm hearing is pockets of capacity really is just character development. And mm-hmm. see what you're talking about. People don't want to hear it. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I'm trying to keep us in an hour, but you're dropping stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. and that's difficult. It's yeah. a challenging thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's a hard thing to swallow and it to is. face it, to meet and see yourself. Yep. And 
most people struggle because they don't realize the importance of pressing through that space. This is where you see leaders or even where you see people. I won't even just say leaders, but this is where you see people who they keep having the same issue over and over again, where they'll come to, uh, I say, you may, my mom used to tell me when we were younger, she said, either you're going to deal with it now, or you're going to deal with it later, but you're going to have to deal with it, whatever that issue is. And so these are those places where it's almost like, I wouldn't even say a thorn, but it's that frustrating place where um, you keep hitting it. I don't care where you go. You may be in one church, and hit an area where you got to submit, you don't want to submit, you leave, right? Because you feel like people are doing you wrong. You go to your job and you get the same situation, the same type of, um, and sometimes we call it a spirit, but really it's just you. The Lord needs to be It's a cycle. You. Come mm -hmm. on now. You go to your job, you're dealing with the same types of people. You go to the church, you're dealing with the same types of people. Even in your friendships, you keep having the same types of situations. If, if these things are not moving and they're everywhere you're going, that means that there's something in you that needs to be dealt with or even that needs to be uh, conditioned or shaped or broken. And the importance is if you don't do it, you will not get to the next level. And it's interesting because you see people who have come up against these these area these pockets of capacity where the lord is trying to shift you and you see them down the road still complaining about the exact same thing mm -hmm. come on mm -hmm. if you see yourself going around the same mountain over and over again it's like can we get a clue hello yeah and yeah we're but oh. i'm sorry go ahead you no know, this is my area <laughs> but really in, in the getting the clue, a part of the reason why people don't see it is because there's an area in the heart that needs to be dealt with, that needs to be healed, um, that needs to be surrendered, surrendered. that needs to be delivered. Come on. <laughs> and that leads into my next question that I have for you. Mm -hmm. And I believe you've answered it, but you, mm -hmm. you're going to talk. What do you believe is the fundamental reason why people stay in infancy, childhood, or teenage stage in their spiritual maturation, you know, spiritual maturation process. Right. What is the missing ingredient? Um, honestly, it's discipleship. Mm. Right, talk, come on, talk so about it's, it. It's twofold. One piece is discipleship. The other piece is the lack of wanting to lay down your will. So when we talk about discipleship, discipleship and laying down your will go hand in hand. In order for me to get to the next space, right? I'm talking from a place of a person needing to be discipled. The person needing to be discipled needs to lay down their will, right? Mm -hmm. So I, if I'm coming from this place where I know I'm supposed to move to the next level, or I know God is calling me to grow and develop, but can't nobody tell me nothing well or people come to try to give me some direction and I don't want to hear it because I know best or um I'm going to read a book and I'm just going to figure it out that way right you can get only so far doing it on your own and what the enemy does is he create he creates this or we we get into this place where um, maybe we were trying to grow or develop and we asked the wrong people who made us feel like we weren't worth it or like we were a burden or like we need to just figure it out. And so we get into the shell of trying to do it on our own. And so that causes us to get stuck and that causes us not to move forward because we keep going again, it's, it's going around the same circle, but we're going around the circle because we only know what we know mm. You have to pull somebody else in who knows more to help you come up. And most people mm. don't do that because of wounds, because of hurts, because of, don't, we don't trust. We don't trust our pride. Like you said, mm -hmm. pride, 
Oh my God. Mm -hmm. And so the other word is like from the space of being a coach, just being uncoachable. Can't nobody tell you mm -hmm. nothing. Exactly. You no, know, people will pay a thousand dollars and still not do what that coach said to do. Mm -hmm. So until Absolutely. they start, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yep. But then when you look at it on the other spectrum, right, with the discipleship, if I'm called to disciple, there's a level of humility and um depth and grace that I need to have, right? If I'm called to help coach, mentor, lead other people, um, I don't need to just be saying stuff because it sounds good. I got to do the work myself. I, I don't need to just be um, looking at other people's videos all the time, trying to get their revelation. Well, there's a part that I have to play as a leader so that when I release whatever wisdom, knowledge, understanding, whatever insight God has given me to be able to develop those that he put into your care, because that he's putting people into your care. There yeah. is a weight that comes that has to be released. And most I won't say, say both, but Go a lot of people it. that are leaders, that are voices, don't have the weight and capacity to help disciple people who really need it because they never walked it through. They skipped a step. Come on. Come on. We try to shortcut it. Mm -hmm. We try to shortcut it. Mm -hmm. That is so, so true. You can't take people where you have not gone. Mm -mm. you cannot take people where you're not willing to go. And if you're not willing to go and explore the deep parts of yourself and look at your own self, do your own inner self reflections, cry, journal, fall out, talk to somebody, mm -hmm. get delivered on a zoom. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Done it. Been there, done that. Bought the well, <laughs> really? Come on through. Really? Yeah. If you're not willing to do it, mm -hmm. then what, what can you take people? Yep. Mm -hmm. where can you take people oh my goodness I could keep going on and on but you said the fundamental di difference that keep us stuck but we're not transitioning in our spiritual maturation process is lack of discipleship we're uncoachable and mm -hmm. unwilling to lay down our will mm -hmm. yep then you spoke to these pockets of capacity mm -hmm. that God is touching on which are really character issues of the heart Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That he is pressing on and pushing to shape and mold us for our next level. And we Absolutely. resist it. And you said that we keep going around the same mountains over and over again because we keep running from the pockets of capacity. Absolutely. We keep running from our testing. Yep. Oh, my, 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 my. Running from development. Because I'm going to develop myself. Or and let me develop them, but I'm not develop me. And and see that that's going to fall apart. That's good. You're going to implode. It's not going to work. And we're called to deepen and develop. Yeah. We're called to deepen and develop. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to transition here because there is a mm -hmm. video, you know, I do my little homework. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> there is a video that you did very recently on your page in which you transparently shared your testimony. Mm -hmm. God knows my heart. Yes. Yes. Oh, my, my, mm -hmm. my. Absolutely. And so in this, you know, I do talk about relationships and things like yes. that on Well Center uh -huh. on the podcast. And in this video, you, you shared how you were divorced as a believer, but you were, got mm -hmm. yourself in a compromising relationship where you compromised sexually with this man that you really right. loved. Mm -hmm. But as you grew and matured and you were going from mm -hmm. milk to meat, it was getting a little bit hard. It's getting a little mm -hmm. dicey for us. So yeah. tell us, tell us about mm -hmm. this as it relates to moving from milk to meat as a woman of faith. So initially, uh, and just to give you a little bit of background, um, yes, I told my testimony about I, I was married for several years, got divorced. A little while after that, I got in a relationship with a guy. At the time, I was not walking as heavily as I am now with the Lord. Uh, but I love God. I went to church. You know, he was calling me deeper, though. Um, and what I initially got with the guy, we was getting it in, y'all. I'm just going to keep it real. And, and uh, really, I mean, yeah. just to be honest. And so um, the more I read the word and the more I lay before the Lord, it became harder and harder for me to be okay with mm -hmm. sinning against God. Not because um, I didn't love the God, but because I love God more. And there was this place of, um, I always tell my mentees and um, the people that I coach, what you feed will lead, right? And mm -hmm. so I fed my spirit more than I fed my flesh. The more I fed my spirit, it caused me to grow up 
So when we read the word, and this is why a lot of people don't grow as well. When we read the word, the word shines the light inward for us to be able to see what's happening internally because God's desire is that we look like him so if we say that we're believers and we are followers of Jesus Christ that means that our lifestyle mm -hmm. and how we live should begin to reflect the image of God and so the more I read the word the more I wanted my life to reflect the image of God and so it came to this point where and I'm gonna be honest y'all I'm gonna keep it 110 percent real there came this point where and I'm just I'm doing it on your podcast and I'm gonna reveal it because people need to know this right because sometimes when we look at breakthrough right because it's that capacity building when we look at that breakthrough or breakthrough to the next level People tell, I'm the Lord taught me backwards. I'm just gonna say it. Like most people, like, oh, the Lord taught me. I always felt like the Lord taught me completely backwards, right? So when people say you can't be sinning and, and think you're gonna come to the Lord, that's what I did, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. So as I was transitioning from milk to me, as I was transitioning in this situation with this guy, my flesh and my my desire for him was strong. Mm -hmm. The more I read my word, the more, the stronger my spirit became for the Lord. But in this transition, which is what people have, what most people don't talk about, I had this space where I was fornicating. I would fornicate and immediately when I was done, I would cry because I knew I had sinned against the Lord and I would get my Bible and I would read it. And he would look like, what in the world is going on? I'm like, I don't, listen, I don't know, but I would get up and go read my word and I would pray and I would repent. And that happened maybe twice, maybe three times. On that mm. third time, I said, God, if you don't help me, I cannot stop. When I said that, the Lord broke it. Mm. And so that was that me laying down my will. My flesh still wanted them. My desire still wanted them, but I had to lay down my will. I had to lay, because I knew better. The more I read the word, the more I knew better. I knew that wasn't right. Yes, God knew my heart, but God's desire is not that I stay in this place of infancy. So the more he would deal with me and the more, and it was so loving. So he didn't make me feel like I was dirty and a piece of, just horrible. Mm -hmm. It was so loving. But it was always this thing where like my heart yearned to please God. The more I read the word, the mm -hmm. more I learned who he was, I yearned to please him. And so mm -hmm. that yearning broke that attachment. And I didn't mean that there wasn't like th that was the last time, right? that we fornicated. It didn't mean that I didn't have the conversations where it was like, I was still going through trying to break it. But that was that the Lord broke that piece. And the more I was able to strengthen it, the more strength I got from the word, from my relationship with the Lord, from being around other believers and learning mm -hmm. how to walk properly, that eventually I that was able to be completely cut off. I went through Come some, on. And some inner healing in that too, but we got to understand, we have to really look at this journey realistically, right? Mm -hmm. Realistically. If I don't have the word in me, if I, I don't know Christ, if I don't know Christ, I don't care how much I try not to do a thing. I'm going to do it. Come on. That's right. Because he helps us. Go back to your first sentence because you know you dropped something. What you feed, you will lead. lead. That yes. will lead you. And so you were feeding your spirit more than you were feeding your flesh. Yes. And thus the tug of war. Yes. Oh, that's so powerful. Yes. Now, in that video, you went on to say, you know, that friction began to arise in the relationship. And it got to the point where, you know, okay, God, I got to give him up or give up ministry. But, mm -hmm. you know. God told you, I believe you said in the video for where you're going, homeboy doesn't have the capacity for where I'm taking you. And that hurt. It hurt. What advice mm -hmm. would you give to a woman in that same situation? She got a calling on her life. She knows she's saved. She mm -hmm. knows she's filled with the Holy Spirit, but she got boo up there in the bed. God's way is always better. 
God's way is always better. And even if you cannot see it now, I promise you, when I look back on where I was versus where I am, there is no way he wouldn't have been able to be able to stand in this space. I don't even think my life would have looked the same now if I had stayed in that relationship because who he was, he, like he didn't have the uh, the capacity for me. Like, and when I'm, when a mate does not have the capacity for you, that's where the control happens. That's where the domineeringness happens. That's when they begin to tear you down. That's when they begin to hurl words against your identity because the enemy is able to use them to mm -hmm. tear you down. The enemy is able to influence them or use them against the plan of God for your life. And so I don't care how great it may seem. I don't care how wonderful they may seem. It's not worth it. You are literally sacrificing the essence of who you are because where God is taking you is a part of how you are built. He's going to use who you are mm. in the place where he takes you. And so when you deny or you choose not to lay your will down, your desires down, and you say, God, I want them better. God will allow you to do that. I promise mm -hmm. you he will. But the end result is you maybe five to 10 years down the line getting a divorce. That's a steep price to pay. <laughs> getting a divorce or being broken, having to go through all these years of healing and, and trying to get yourself together because you chose your way instead of the way of God. Mm. It is not worth it. When I tell you it is not worth it, no. it is not. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's not worth it. Mm -mm. Not worth it's it. Not worth it. You're so true. The wrong person, if they don't have the capacity for you, they have because they're so close to you and because they're intimately connected and because now you've established a thick and fat soul tie with this person. Mm -hmm. It's like a chain. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Now they can influence you in such an intimate way and chip at that core identity, um, mm -hmm. diminish your capacity in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those soul ties, what people don't realize about soul ties is you can renounce a soul tie depending on how deep the relationship was. It is levels to it. Mm, yes. I can remember even being married. Now, my ex-husband passed in 2016. I was still breaking soul ties after his death and we had been divorced for years because of the depth of the tie and the depth of the things that were hurled and the things that I went through while I was married. And so if you can avoid that, do it. I was disobedient. <laughs> I was disobedient. And I went with my flesh. I went with my desire. And it was because of some ignorance. I was young, all that good stuff. But I was disobedient because I heard the voice of the Lord and I knew the Lord and I did the opposite. So those soul ties, uh, this is where people talk about trauma and all that kind of stuff. Some of those are trauma bonds that you experience that you have with these people. So it, it's the Lord's way is the safest way, period. The Lord's way is the safest way for our hearts, the mm -hmm. safest way for our souls, yep. the safest way for our bodies and our mm -hmm. destinies. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. And once you made the relationship to lay it down. Then mm -hmm. your elevation, your ability to flow in your anointing, the deliverance mm -hmm. anointing, all of the things that God mm -hmm. anointed you to do begin to happen. So how soon after you, you like laid mm -hmm. it down for real, for real, mm -hmm. did you begin to see that shift? Honestly, I saw it even. So when I completely cut him, even before I completely cut him off, I saw the elevation happen. So what happens is when we make the decision to say yes, it gives God permission to do the rest. That when we talk about those pockets of capacity, those are turning points, right? And these turning points are points where you're either going to say yes to the Lord or no to the Lord, right? If you say no, you're going to go right back around the circle and you're going to come back and he's going to give you another opportunity because he's gracious like that. So when you say yes, when I said yes to the Lord, I choose to lay him down. One of the, the things that I noticed was 
my hunger for the Lord began to increase. My desire to know him began to increase. Um, even, and I'm not even talking about the physical things. Cause a lot of times we, we want to, uh, when we think about maturity and, you know, we laying this down and so God going to give us all this, that, mm -hmm. and the other, the thing that I needed the most was my peace. Come on, and my sanity and a healed whole heart, a heart where, because the word says, I would, that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul. soul. So everything that God has called me to do will come to pass, but my soul got to prosper first, right? You prosper, be in good health, even as yes prospers, right and so my goal was my soul prospering but in that prosperity of my soul in that learning how to um that walking in the peace the peace alone is worth come it's, on it's so invaluable priceless i mean like just the peace in itself but that that god will elevate you internally first he elevates you externally external. Right. Say that again so I can get it. Say it again. He Say will again. elevate you internally before you he elevates you externally. Because if this is the thing, elevation comes internally first because you have to take dominion of your internal emotions. When you can take a dominion over yourself, over your lifestyle, over your emotions, over how you respond, over your decisions, over your discipline. You and you ain't gonna have no problem taking dominion over a demon. You oh, have no problem ooh. taking dominion over a, an atmosphere. You have no problem taking dominion in a region as the Lord increases your anointing and the grace that's on your life because you have dealt with the war, which is you. <laughs> right world war you when you deal with that internal war that is where the weight of glory comes from which is why you increasing that capacity and you mastering those pockets of capacity is important because that is where your anointing is when they talking about the squeezing and, and the, the 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 squeezing so that the oil comes out that squeezing is you mastering those pockets of capacity that's why you see people, they got all the right lingo, but there's no weight behind it. Or it's almost like you hear them talking what they're saying sound good, but it feel empty because they have not mastered that mm. pocket of capacity. You can't fake that place. My God. You can't fake Ooh. it. I just keep letting you go, honey, so I can get some good sound bites. <laughs> you can't fake it. You can't fake it. Oh yeah. my God. And I heard Graham Cook say this one time and it reminds stuck with me how are you going to gain territory for god and how are you going to take territory from the enemy when you haven't even conquered your own inner ter territory mm -hmm. the territory inside of you that's the, that world territory. war me that's the, the battle territory everybody want to listen i'm telling you i train people all the time first thing they say okay so you're gonna teach me how to do deliverance Deal with the deliverance in you first, right? Because all deliverance is, is you, well, it's not all, right? So you're casting out devils and all of that, but really your, your deliverance is the Lord saving you or breaking you free from bondage. So however the Lord chooses to break you free from that bondage, that's what he chooses to do. Sometimes you'll cast out that devil. Sometimes you need to go read your words so you can get some revelation, right? So you can get delivered from, from a faulty mindset. We look mm -hmm. so hard at, oh, it's time to the deliverance. Let's cast the devil out. And yes, it is necessary sometimes. That's not always the case. That's not always the case. Sometimes you need to uproot a wrong thinking process and you need to get some discipline so that you can maintain the freedom that the Lord is trying to give you. I think we look at, but all of these things help in gaining the oil. People want to be so oily. Oh, they oily. They oily because they've been through something. They say it costs. Do you know what the oil costs? It costs me my will. Jesus said, not my will, but, but your God. will be done. It's not mm -hmm. mine. It's God's will. And so I got to say, okay, the world says I, it's about me. The world says you better guard you. You better make sure you are right. You better make sure I, I every man for himself. And God for us all. God said, Jesus laid down his life for us. Come on. He didn't say, let me keep my life. He laid it down. Pick up your cross and follow him.
and that yeah, laying down of a will. And it's a daily surrender, Rhonda. It's not something you, it's not a one and done. You got to daily lay that thing down. Mm -hmm. Because yep. you're going to come back and pick it up. You're fl I'm going to pick my own wheel right on back up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, and when you go to pick it up, lay that joker down. As fast as you picked it up, lay it back down. Do you know how many times? And that's, that's oh. a part of the walk that people, that we, we have this cookie cutter osmosis type understanding of being a believer. It's not cookie cutter. Sometimes it's a straight line. Sometimes the line is jagged. Sometimes the line is curved. Sometimes sometimes you can't even find where the line begins and where it ends. But that's life. I'd rather do life in the kingdom with a surety and a promise that I've already won than not in the kingdom, not knowing what's going to happen next. Mm -mm. That's the thing that even being a, a believer in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. we have a blessed assurance. We literally have yes. promises that when we appropriate the promises of God, it can it, it has to come to pass. Period. Yes. Like there's no question. There's no, I hope it will. When we and when I talk about appropriating the promises of God, I'm talking about being persuaded that is true. Faith. The real kind of faith. Exactly. And that's that a capacity a pocket. Question. That's a big possibility. You know what I'm trying capacity. to say. Uh-huh. Pocket and capacity mixed together. Mm -hmm. It's big. Mm -hmm. Yep. That yep. is so huge. Mm -hmm. One of the things, and this leads right into my questions, mm -hmm. but, you know, like in that video, you were, you were like, our lifestyle as a leader makes a difference. Because mm -hmm. you were talking about how God knows our heart. Mm -hmm. And when we're moving from milk to meat, we thinking it's yeah. okay. But at, at some point, you got to make a line in the sand. Absolutely. Like, for God, I live. And for mm -hmm. God, I'll die. Absolutely. And my lifestyle needs mm -hmm. to reflect that, which means I can't keep hemming and hawing and dipping and slipping and dipping in, you know, the fornication or whatever else mm -hmm. you're doing. Yes. At some point, you got to make a, different, a, a line yeah. in the sand about your life. And you were talking about how you live your, you're like, I want my witness to be good. You were saying mm -hmm. things like that. And yeah. how that matters as a uh, a leader. Mm -hmm. And then it's one thing that you said, if you're really truly living for Christ, mm -hmm. you will convict without even saying a mumbling word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. Yeah. So I can remember um, being younger because I've always loved the Lord, right? And I can remember being younger and I would go in, I was in on praise team. I was uh, on so many different things like now <laughs> when I was um, a young girl, but I remember, you know, just singing on the praise team and, you know, the spirit will move. And then afterwards, people would be so mean to me. Like I was a young girl and these were adults, right? And they would be mean like they would do stuff like turning the microphones off when we would sing all this kind of stuff and I'm like Lord what in the world I'm a young girl and one of the things I used to always say was God I'm just doing what you're telling me to do I don't understand why people respond to me the way they do mm -hmm. and I learned it's not me the Lord showed me that it's not when, when you especially when you call when you go into different arenas and you see people treating you wrong or people it's like they're coming against you or they easily offended about everything that you say or or there's always something wrong now there is this place of maturity and then there's this place place of weight right where it's the god in you that causes people to be convicted but you know that when your heart is tender towards the lord and your heart is just to please them. Not that you're going to be perfect, but that your heart is really to not to be blameless before the Lord. One of the mottos that I live by is when Jesus said, the evil one comes but can find nothing in me. Mm -hmm. My prayer is always, Lord, don't, don't, whatever, if there's anything there, I need for you to clean it out. Create in me a clean heart, renew a right spirit, yes. because I want to remain blameless before the Lord. And I know that's through Christ, but there's a part of my lifestyle that either opens the door to blame or closes the door. The enemy accuses regardless, but how I live my life will either open the door to blame that causes condemnation or will stand as a shield, right? Mm -hmm. 
the shield of faith. It'll stand as the breastplate of righteousness. Right. But when these things start to hit, I have this shield to be shield. able to stand. And so what I would notice is when I would go, because that's what I would stand on. Okay, Lord, I, I, I would do like this little list. Um, is my heart pure? Do I have an offense? Am I... Um, do I feel any kind of way against the person or people when I go into certain areas? And if none of those things is a yes, I'm good. Right. Right. And so what I would notice is when I would go into different areas, like I, because I had grown my capacity, right. I could effectively discern when it was a spirit and when it was the person's flesh, which should feel some kind of way because I mean my life says this is how I live and this is what I do wow but when I would get into these rooms and people would either like look funny I remember walking into the, this event and people wouldn't even look me in the face and I'm like what in the world? like how you doing I'm trying to look them in the eye like this I'm like Lord what is it it's really? that they're uh -huh. Listen, I done been through some stuff. And I'm like, Lord, why are people responding like that? But it is the light of Christ. And when you have not done, if your lifestyle does not reflect the uh, spirit of truth, you're going to be embarrassed. You're going to be intimidated. You're going to look down. You're not going to be able to stand in the confidence. It's not because I did anything because I used to try to dumb myself down and try mm. to, oh Lord, I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. You will feel uncomfortable because yeah. if you, my lifestyle, and I love you, I, will, I love people. I love people the way the Lord loves them, but I cannot not be who I am and walk mm -hmm. in confidence. Come on. Kind of way. That's not what it is. But I learned, um, I also learned that these are the rooms when, when the majority of the people act like this, these are the rooms that I don't need to be in unless I'm going in there to cast out and leave. <laughs> that is oh. got rooms that you stay in and you dwell in because these are the rooms that will bring you down and make you question your identity mm, that is so good yeah, that is so you, good you come into those types of spaces of those types of rooms you get in and you get out you get in and get Don't out get because your life and in your in light is your light is convicting mm -hmm. it's convicting and irritating demons and mm -hmm. irritating their flesh that's what's yep. going on right Mm -hmm. So you get in, get out. If it's somewhere you got to stay, you take dominion and cause whatever's happening in the atmosphere to bow. And it got to bow. Like I, I have, I'm 100% persuaded on that. <laughs> it has to. Mm. Because of because I don't come in myself, I come in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, this next question. Mm -hmm. What, and this is talking about like platforms and mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What wisdom will you give to someone who is maturing and trying to build their platform, but they're struggling. Mm -hmm. They're getting caught up in appearances, praise platforms, algorithms, creating content for the sake of creating content to get a like, you know, making your life appear bigger than what it is in light of all that conversation, like your lifestyle convinces a leader, milk the meat pockets of capacity. But here we are, mm -hmm. all of these things mm -hmm. front and stunting on Instagram, you know, mm -hmm. talk about it. Um, if that's what you're doing, you're going to have to sustain it. So my advice would be stop. And when I say stop, my advice would be take, take, take a little bit of time, take maybe a week or two to really consecrate. Mm -hmm. I ain't even saying fast. Consecrate yourself to the Lord. When I'm talking about consecrating, cut off the social media, cut off your, the, like the basics. If you need your phone for work, fine. Take off the social medias. And focus on Christ, focus on what you watch, read your word, study the word, because when you do that, you're cutting off all of the voices. It can be easy to get caught up in what other people are doing. It can be easy to get caught up in what it looks, what looks like being the, the, the it thing for now and trying to recreate that. But whatever God wants to birth in you, whatever the message is, that message will hold the weight that it needs in order for you to reach the people that God has called you to reach. You don't got to reach everybody, 
You just need to reach the ones that God called you to reach. And so when you're trying to keep up with the appearance of others, you're going to mm -hmm. be overwhelmed. You're going to be anxious. You're going to be jealous. You're going to struggle with sleep. You're going to, you coveting all of these Come things on. because you're trying to recreate something that is not in you to do. Learn who you are because that is a sign that there is an issue in your identity. You Come don't on. know or value what God created that's fearfully and wonderfully made. And that's you. That's mm -hmm. a sign you don't know who you are and what God is calling you to do, which means you might need to back up a little bit off of the platform and figure that out. Come on. Because Come the on. Lord is the one that will elevate you. He elevates you in the right timing. Not you. It's, it's taking that time, that mm -hmm. time with God. That's mm -hmm. where the weight is gathered. It's like gathering yourself yeah. and you get the, you find your voice, mm -hmm. your weight, your mm -hmm. message when you're yeah. disconnected from all of the noise. It's a, to me, it's a lot of chatter. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of chatter and it's a lot of noise and you mm -hmm. get caught up really bad. You yeah. have to take, oh. What most people don't know about me is in 2014, I had started I, I was coaching Matt and I was coaching, I was traveling, I was ministering heavy. Like I was traveling all different cities, ministering, all that land, hand, hand, people falling, all that good stuff, right? Um, and in 2018, I experienced uh my brother passed, right? And so when 2018 hit, stuff shifted, like shifted, shifted. And I had to regroup. Like I had to like go Gather. back. Uh-huh, to the drawing board almost. And it was like, I had to learn who I was, learn what God was calling me to do and really become rooted and grounded and solid in my identity and how I was developed, how I was created and what God has called me to do. And so 2018 to now, because now the Lord is doing the elevation. I'm not doing it, right? Mm. So now it was good in the beginning. I enjoyed it. It was fun, all of that. But the way that it is now, the way that the Lord is elevating me, I'm not the one trying to make nothing happen. I mean, I don't have to make anything happen. I served, I, I poured into people. Like I did the work behind the scenes without this big platform. But in that space, God was building my capacity for what he is doing now in my life. Everything that I learned from it really 2014 up until now all of the, the lessons and the processing and the capacity that was built. And when I say capacity, I'm talking about showing up capacity, right? The things that the Lord built and the weight and the way that he dug deep in me to heal and to equip and to uh, just, it's almost like this, this process of, of making me tender, right? Making me tender and, and um, his timing is so perfect. And like, you can feel, I can sense, cause I, I discern, that's one of my heavy gifts, but um, being able to discern the timing of the launch, cause that's really where it is, mm -hmm. that, that only comes through allowing the Lord to process me. And there were a lot of times where I felt like I should have been going out beforehand. And he was like, no, guess what I did? Sat down and hush. <laughs> you sat down and had several seats. Uh -huh. So there was a big difference in your pre-2018 before your brother passed and how you are functioning and flowing and the way you're functioning and flowing now. Yeah. And, he, and he used the death of your brother as a catalyst mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. And it was so interesting. My brother died April 6th of 2018. That Friday, that weekend before I had an event. Mm -hmm. refuel recharge conference I did it every year that conference at that conference was the like the the biggest move of God that I've ever seen in my life like literally okay wow um just the way the Lord moved I, my mind was blown right and then that next week it was like it was almost like I felt like the Lord had pulled me back and I'm like what, what in the world is happening? It's like a crash. You were on this big high and then you came all the way mm -hmm. like I, it was down. Like all the way down. And I'm like, Whew. what in the world is going on? And did you immediately think, okay, this was the devil. This is an attack because of what I knew God. It was the enemy. 
I knew it was the enemy. I knew I sensed that I could feel it. I did I didn't have the languaging for what it was, but I knew it was something that was happening that was not right. But in that space, that whole process, that whole ordeal, that whole process of developing and growing and all of that made me solid. My roots grow deep in God. I am unshakable, unmovable, Amen. always abounding in the Lord. Like my roots, I am solid in Christ. And if I feel shaky, I have solid people around me to help me stay grounded, which is how you maintain your maturity. That's how you maintain it. Because I, I think I heard this when I was younger, but being a believer, a Christian is, is the only situation or religion or even the only lifestyle where if you stop reading your word and you stop spending time with the Lord, you can revert right back to a baby. Mm, that, that's, that makes sense. If you don't read your word, if you don't stay, if you don't read your word, if you don't, uh, if you're not around believers, if you don't study, if you don't spend time in worship and spend time in the presence of the Lord, you're going to revert right back to a babe in Christ. And what does that look like? You not trusting the Lord, feeling like the Lord don't love you or feeling no like faith. God, mm -hmm, no faith, no faith at all. Question no capacity, faith, no capacity, cycles and patterns that won't mm -hmm. go away. The yep. same old stuff. Yep. So it was through your ordeal and you got rooted, grounded fixed and founded in the love of God for Listen. yourself. You got rooted, grounded, fixed, founded, settled, Listen. established, secure. Listen. Come on, somebody. Listen, I'm telling you, like, nobody can come and tell me God is not real. Nobody can come and tell me anything about my father. I'm that's how you that and see that's the weight mm -hmm. that's what you were talking about like you can't be out here using your voice and you don't have no weight and no mm -mm. timber and no tone to your mm -hmm. voice and no authority but yes. you got that weight because of what you went through absolutely and the and the thing that most the thing that i really want people to understand is you're gonna go through stuff regardless life is life life be life so it all day. So whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to deal with stuff. You're going to go through life. Life happens to everybody. But the way that you make it through life on the other side with the victory is in Christ. Within, and I, I won't go into that because I don't have time, but within the, the course of about a year and a half, I lost a grandson, my ex-husband, past father of my children and my brother that's within the course of, of a year and a half and i'm standing here in 2023 telling you ain't nobody gonna tell me nothing about my god because he is faithful and he is good Amen. that is the capacity now i probably would have went through the exact same things but if i did not go if i did not know christ i would not be in this place you would not be sitting here today mm -mm. talking about Pure Gold LLC. Mm -mm. So that's why you need to master those pockets of capacity. That's why we got to get off that milk and graduate mm -hmm. to our meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that a whole experience had you all up in the meat. Listen, <laughs> I'm like, Lord, you gonna, you better give me something. <laughs> you know how many times I'm like, Lord. I, I need something. You got to give me something. Like, this is not going to work. I need something. I need you. Because it's a place of desperation. You kind of mm -hmm. get real desperately. Like, God, I'm a little cray cray here. Like, mm -hmm. you really, like, yeah. Really, really, really. Really, not even joking. There were so many times where I was like, Lord, if you don't show me who you are, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like if, if you, if you don't fix this, if you don't come in, if I don't know you better than I know you right now, I'm not going to make it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. That's my, but God, knew. if you don't help me, there is no hope. That's what I, I say. God, if you don't help me, there is nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are some situations that you will walk through where you have to have a deeper revelation of who God is. And that was, that's what I learned through my walk. Like, there were so many times and it was like, there was a time it felt like stuff was happening back to back. And I was like, God, 
I have to have a deeper revelation of who you are. Like, I got to know you different than how I knew you last season. Because last season's understanding is not going to keep me. If I maintain this last season understanding, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall away. I'm not even just going to fall. I'm going to fall away. away. So if we start thinking like this, where our relationship is concerned, where just our, it's not enough to just, oh, God is good. That's not, that's not enough. Because if we don't get deep, if we don't go deep, deep color to deep, if we don't get a deeper revelation of who God is, we will fall away. That like, there's no, I don't care how great you think you are. As much as I love God, I'm rooted and grounded this season right here. I know for a fact, I am solid in Christ. When the Lord shifts me, when that next elevation happens and he shifts me into that next space, I'm going to need a deeper revelation of who he is because I'm going to need my capacity to be stretched. I'm going to need to know him in another way. I'm going to need to know another aspect of his glory, of who he is, of his hand in my life. And when we stop looking at God that way, we will fall away. We will look to other things. We will look to other things to satisfy us. We'll look to other people to try to be that answer that only God can be and so when we Mm -hmm. look at him that way when we are desperate and hungry for him in that capacity in that way we will forever be going from glory to glory and going from milk to meat in Christ in every situation glory to glory Mm -hmm. faith to faith strength Mm -hmm. to strength Mm -hmm. and so it's like what you're saying is it was so good for Mm -hmm. every season you need a deeper and a new revelation of God the revelation mm-hmm. you had of God before when you were high on the mountaintop in your conference mm-hmm. you had to get a whole different Listen. revelation of God when your brother passed a few days later mm-hmm. a whole that different. revelation did not sustain you in the valley mm-hmm. the mountaintop revelation did not sustain you when you mm-hmm. went through that valley season yeah. right? because that all that laying out in the spirit the glory was so heavy and high and all that that was great that glory from that last that week before, I thank the Lord that it helped, but it Christ needed to sustain me. I needed to know him more. I needed to understand who he was in order to be able to stay. There were like anybody that says that no, nope, I'm good. I know, I know God. I'd be scared. I'm of. leery. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know him the way that I know him now, but I know there's more to him and there is more and I want more. I need more. I have to know more of who he is. When you stop so hungering good. for him like that. That's a red flag, right? That's a big, a big red flag. And you see, and while we're on this and then I'm going to have to transition mm-hmm. at the times that we're living in mm-hmm. these accelerated, crazy off the mm-hmm. chain, times that we're living in when you Mm -hmm. look at the news when you look at what's going on in the world when you look at what's happening in the body of christ Mm -hmm. i feel like this revelation Mm -hmm. about knowing god in a deeper way is so profound Mm -hmm. because the way we knew god in 2020 is not going to be the same way we need him in 2023 with all Mm -hmm. the hell that's breaking loose and all this mess that's going on Mm -hmm. it's just not we can't Mm -hmm. and more stuff is coming down the pipeline Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. get worse. I don't want to sound doomsday, but I, you no, know, no. I'm just, it's, it... it's truth. And it is. And, and the beautiful thing about God is that when we know him more, he would never let us be unaware. So people, it's like, when we have a deeper revelation of God, that means we have deeper understanding and revelation of his secrets. We have, he gives us insight, foresight, and understanding. He gives us wisdom. The word said it has been given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. We are a part of those mysteries. And the mysteries go beyond just casting out a devil or praying or being a preacher or a pastor. The mysteries are, they go beyond, like people are going to have to be fed. People are going to need to have somewhere to go so that, uh, or resources. That's why we need the nonprofits. That's why we need the people people in government. That's why we need the people um, 
food banks. We need, we need lawyers. We need doctors. We need these people because what we have learned as a body is only, it's not even scratching mm -hmm. the surface of the capacity that we need for what God is going to do in the earth through us. Just like we have the social services, social services should be ruled by the hand of God. Social services mm -hmm. should be under the dominion of Jesus Christ so that the will and the plans of God will be released in the earth. What does that mean? We have the strategy of heaven. We need to be in those uh, places of authority as believers to be able to direct and to, to order God's plans in the earth concerning what's happening. And that's why we got to know him more. Yes, we need a greater revelation of who God is, a deeper revelation beyond us beyond mm. ourselves beyond what god is calling us to do for our purpose because our yes. purpose is only one piece one tiny like piece picture, one small piece of the big picture how does your pur purpose partner with your sister and your brother to make god's big picture idea for what's going to be needed in 2027 come on that's how we need to be thinking we yeah it's a foresight it's thinking much bigger it's a higher perception mm -hmm. a deeper revelation yep. yeah every joint supply it mm -hmm. right but if we don't go from milk to meat you're not going to be able to see how your gift and the purpose that God has on your life match or comes together with your sister and brother because you're still holding the fence and you're still hurt and you're still angry and you're still mad. Because they you still won't can't be disciple and you won't be coached. You don't want to listen mm -hmm. to nobody. Mm -hmm. You're still going around the same pattern for 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, my God. Which is where we got to grow up. Oh, Jesus. We got to oh, grow up. Lord. I can dislike a person and still work with them. I can, um, I, whether I like you or not, has nothing to do with what God is saying and what God has on your life. Whether I agree with your message or not has nothing to do with if God wants to use you to get his plan across, my job is to make sure the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not that my will be done because I feel like it's a good thing and they need to suffer because I don't like them. That's immaturity. That's milk. Meat says, okay, I don't agree that you may be a Republican. I'm going there. I don't agree that you may, you're a Republican, but God says you have whatever on your life and what's on you needs to be released in the earth mm -hmm. so that we can gain the resources that we need in order for us to spring forward. I don't care about all the other stuff. I believe whatever God is saying for you needs to happen. I don't care that you're a Democrat. I, what I know is whatever is on your bloodline, on. It needs. I need to be under that thing, whatever's on your bloodline Come so on. that. It can be poured down to me so that I can get everything so that the wealth of the wicked can be laid up for the Come on now. so that I can't doors can be open. That wouldn't have been open if you weren't in office. It's like, we got to be able to see. And these are examples. I'm not saying this. Is what <laughs> okay. Let me make sure. Oh my gosh. Your example. <laughs> and that, oh my God, is a sign that you got to grow up. But these are examples. Yeah of how the Lord could move. The Lord could have you go. I, I mean, it's so many things that the Lord wants to do that he can't do because we can't get Because we're that. immaturity. We can't get past our little feelings and flesh and our little political views and perspectives, mm -hmm. our narrow mindedness. And God is so expansive and wide because he's looking generationally and legacy and we're still stuck down here and God's mm -hmm. way out here. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. It's beyond you just preaching on a platform at a church. And your Facebook live. Come on now. Well, that's the Lord. <laughs> yeah. The people I need to get to, y'all need to come on up. Come on up higher so you can go ahead and have your business, have your food bank, have your nonprofit, have your uh, governmental agency, your nursing home, whatever it is that God has called you to have, because you got to come up. You got to get out, get from that milk mm -hmm. to that meat so that we can, mm -hmm. that vision can come out of you. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to transition because I know we're getting close to our yeah. time, but this has been so good. Yeah. The business side. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the Well Centered Woman podcast, we talk about emotional mastery, you know, of women of faith as we start businesses and operating mm -hmm. our purpose and brands and all yeah. of that. So what triggers in your emotions came up when you finally decided, okay, I am going to step out and really do Pure Gold LLC. Mm -hmm. What kind of emotional highs and lows and any getting in your feelings and little different things that you kind of tribulated with? <laughs> Do you mind sharing with us? <laughs> yeah. 
fear, 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 feeling like everybody is saying what you say. That is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Feeling like, okay, I mean, everybody's doing the same thing. So where do I fit in the big scheme of things? And then just that, that it's all of it is really was fear, fear for me. Fear of not being received, fear of responsibility, fear of success, fear of not feel like I won't be able to handle it when the Lord sends all of these people and what am I going to do and not having the right systems and all of that. But what I've learned is that God called me. I didn't call myself. And if God called me, he's going to open the door. He's going to give me everything that I need and I'm going to hear him. I'm not going to be afraid that I'm, I'm going to miss it. Yeah, right. that would be me, right? Yeah. Girl, did you, you do? Was that God? You don't miss it. Well, if I miss him, he'll find me, right? Like what exactly. Joyce Meyer said. <laughs> exactly. We want, we don't. Like God can't that. find you. Mm -hmm. find Listen, you. all of that is tricks of the enemy to keep us stuck. Procrastination. What procrastination was a huge issue of mine, but I learned that I procrastinated because I didn't know the next thing to do. And the only way you know the next thing to do is by connecting with the right people to get what you need. Procrastination, literally, you stop because you don't know which way to go. When you stop, you wait. That fear starts building because you start thinking about all this stuff start that you want to do and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And so them thoughts start weighing on you. And then you start getting anxious because it's like, I know I got something in me, but I don't know how to do it. And then all of a sudden now you don't have it. Like you, you're not even moving. You just and four moving. months done pass by. You're losing momentum. Now mm -hmm. <laughs> disappointed and sad and, and then you're looking at somebody else on facebook that's doing uh-huh uh and feeling some kind of way like, dang I, should, I could be I, doing this six. or critiquing them right <laughs> they ain't even saying it right it ain't even good but they doing it though they doing it though what about you why you got so much to say but you're not doing what you're supposed to be mm -hmm. doing because you when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing you don't have time to look at anybody else and so i literally like i had to now I went through some deliverance now. Some of that fear was generational. I'm just saying, I, I believe wholeheartedly in inner healing and deliverance because some of the procrastination was generational. Some of this stuff was some, from things that had happened in my, when I was younger, that Lord had to break. I had to get some healing. But in that process, I also connected with the right people Amen. So that I could get and hear some different voices that help propel me into the right direction. I would put um, on purpose, I would schedule certain things and add others in it so that I made sure that I did it. That's so like I was for accountability. So if I know I'm going to teach, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going to teach a training. I'll say that forever. What I did was I said, I'm going to teach a training. I got two people to come in and help that I know was going to push me. And I developed the training and we got it out. They created a flyer and got it out before I, I even finished the, the training. However, that forced me to finish the training. So sometimes you have to do things like that to get you moving. To to outsmart your own self to put it when you put it out there. I've done that too. Go ahead and put it out there. Go on yep. to the email list and go on to do a flyer because now you didn't got yourself out there. That'll make exactly. you just rise on up and do it because now exactly. oh, I got to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's so, okay. That's good. It's already in you. You just need a catalyst sometimes to make it happen. A little so, kick, yeah. a little kick, a little kick. Mm -hmm. That's all mm -hmm. we need. Yeah. So my last question before we wrap it up. Mm -hmm. If you could go back and give 18-year-old Rhonda some advice. Mm -hmm. What would you give that baby? I would tell 18-year-old Rhonda, you are so fly girl. You are beautiful. You are the right size. You have the right heart. And just be patient. Everything will come in its time. And why would you say that to her? Because she always wanted to be accepted. And so being accepted means I'm going to do everything that everybody wants me to do. I'm going to look a certain way. I'm going to act a certain way. People, everybody had a voice in what 18-year-old Rhonda was supposed to do except for 18-year-old Rhonda. Patience would have saved a lot of, a lot of time. Being patient. Mm-hmm. 
So and there were times you were too hasty and moved prematurely. Oh, a whole lot of times. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing was, I always knew the time I was wrong, but people pleasing. So people pleasing pushed you out of timing. Every time. Every single time. Every time. I've always heard the voice of the Lord. I knew when the Lord was telling me no, but I also had the pressure of people saying this is how it's supposed to be. And these are people that I love and people that I really care about and people that I feel like, you know, I mean, they're doing it, so it should be good. There's certain stuff that I could not and should not have been doing, <laughs> but I did it. It affected me differently from people that did it for years because I was marked. That's a whole different podcast. Oh, Being marked. podcast. Oh, oh my God. So yeah, oh my God. patience and waiting it out. Amen. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I mm -hmm. hear you. So as we close this out, tell us about your latest projects. I know you've opened the doors to your mentorship oh, program, yes, but what so else do you great. want people to know about and how can they contact you? So, yes. So I have a mentorship program. It is peer goal mentorship. Same thing. We help, I help um, my mentees and those that are part of the cohort shift from milk to meat. So we go through a series of inner healing, deliverance, um, how to live a life of prosperity and wholeness um, in Christ. And then we shift to the administrative aspects of building whatever it is that God is calling you to do. So whether you're building your brand, you're building a business, you're building um, a play. Because <laughs> I do have yeah. some in there that are very artistic. Whatever God is calling you to build, building an excellence and building God's way. Um, just learning how to hear the voice of the Lord and and to be okay yeah. as God leads. So that's some of what we are doing. And then we're training them to be mentors for the next cohort. But um, yeah, so that's one project that I'm excited about. Then I have some speaking engagements that's coming up that's on my website that you guys can see. But if you want to contact me, right, uh, my website is www.rondasbarnes.org. No H, R-O-N-D-A-S Barnes.org. Um, you can find everything there. I'm also on Facebook, Rhonda S. Barnes, and um, Instagram, saying Rhonda S. Barnes. So, yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. The lovely and powerful coach, Rhonda Barnes. It was a pleasure, mm -hmm. an absolute pleasure. Yeah. This has been a blessing. Mm -hmm. to, to I enjoyed interview, To interview you. But we're signing off. We bless you. And definitely we'll have the links in the show notes. And you'll be able to click on YouTube and go directly to her uh, offering. So have a wonderful evening. And we'll, we'll talk soon.